So we already showed this guy being used with 2S and we figured we would get some upgrades. So, bam, upgrades. I'm Ken with the Shop Mini RC and this is gonna be a long one. We do a lot of stuff to this truck and kind of go into detail. So we're gonna make sure that we go ahead and put chapters below. That way you can easily skip through to the parts that you wanna see or just watch the whole thing. These are hobby details. Uh, they're Chinese based, yes, but there's not a lot of people making upgrades for these. And these are all brass and the quality, we haven't opened them up, but the quality just, it, they're heavy and they look good. Um, I don't know about these shocks yet. We'll have to probably take them apart and get them working a little better. They look a little, little, little stiff, but uh, yeah, let's check this stuff out. So here's all the stuff that we got for the Enduro 24 from Hobby Details. And we will put links in the description below so that you can find all these awesome parts. Let's go ahead and start taking a look at uh, what we've got here. So we have some brass hex extenders. I don't even know, if, well, I don't know if they're actually extenders, but they are hex adapters and they're brass. I think the stock are about the same size, so I don't think they actually extend anything, but we'll, we'll find out. We also have our, our belly plate or our skid plate. I love the way these are, these are milled with the brass showing through. Like that's really cool. They look really good. Then we have our front uh, transmission. It's uh, three pieces. It's the front plate, the motor plate. It's actually a little lip on there. And it snaps in there. That seems good. And the milling around the edges is just, it's slick. It looks really nice. Then our front knuckles. There's no bearings, so you have to transfer your stock bearings over. And last, the shocks. So I don't know if these are oil filled or whatnot, we will open them up, but they are brass. The whole housing is brass. So that's pretty cool. They've got some weight to them. I mean, these all feel good. Oh, of course I say it and then we end up with this. Hmm, that's not good. So it's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna open it up and see what's going on. Uh, hopefully we can fix that. If not, that'll be very disappointing because the rest of these feel pretty good. So I don't, I don't know what's going on there. That's rough though. We also have uh, extra springs with those. I don't know if these are stiffer, more stiff or not. We'll, we'll pull some out and we'll look. We'll just do it by feel. They do not appear to have any oil. It's an interesting inset. It looks like it's a, there's like a nipple on top. So, or is that a C, it looks like a C clamp actually, or a C, a C clip. So that's interesting. This part unscrews. I bet you we can pop this whole piece off. Well, there's a o ring in there. Hmm, o ring and a brass ring. And a C clip, interesting. All right, let's see if we can get this shaft out of here. Again, you just wanna make sure you're not scuffing up the shaft. Oh, these are much softer. So the ones that comes with are pretty stiff. These are very soft. You can even kind of see it in the uh, thickness of the spring. The soft ones also look like they're a little, just a little shorter. Just a little bit, a little smaller in diameter too. But yeah, they're definitely much softer. Much, much more soft. So even that little cup is brass. All right, so two rings, two O-rings. So these can hold oil, I would think. They might leak a little bit, we'll see. There's our shaft. Looks like there's two C-clips in there on our shaft and the bushing or gasket, sort of plastic. One C-clip on the top and one C-clip on the bottom. So these are actually, I mean, is this an O-ring? Yeah, so that's an O-ring. 
on top and on bottom. So I don't know why this one was sticking. Um, let's go ahead and take one of the good ones apart and we'll see if there's a difference. So it's the same setup, large O-ring on the top, two brass rings, and then the small O-ring on the bottom. So it's exactly the same order. It's not like the O-rings were out of place or it was had an extra O-ring or it was missing a brass ring or anything like that. So. this guy back together yeah I don't know how they would do with these super soft springs I feel like they uh they need the heavier springs because of the resistance from the o-rings and whatnot are these brass I think these are brass as well I mean everything on here <laughs> except for the shock shaft and the spring and maybe the collar nut the collar nut there is brass the collar nut might even be brass it's definitely a metal. Huh. Okay, that's better. Weird. I don't know what was causing it to stick. Maybe one of the O-rings was kind of tucked and we didn't realize it when we took it apart, but we're good now. They feel smooth. They feel real smooth. It does appear as though there's some extra dampening. A little bit more dampening in some than others. That's okay. So the hex adapters come with the barrel nuts. So those are brass barrel nuts and some of the, the washers or spacers as well as the axle pins. Uh, just screws on the plate, just screws here, just screws here, and then the shocks. They've got extra long screws, looks like some spacers, and then our, our ball joints or whatever these things are called. I'm spacing out. What are these things called? Post it in the comments below. Ball Ball joints is the only thing I can think of. That, 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 there's another name for them. Either way, it comes with those, and those are also brass. And then a bunch of little O-rings. These are actually larger O-rings than what's in the shocks by far. So these are for the outside of the ball joints. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get all these things installed on here, and we're going to show a before run on our rocks just to kind of get a baseline, and then the after and see if there's a difference. There should be. It's going to be a lot of, a lot of extra weight. Um, we'll probably run it on 1S and 2S. So we'll do, we'll do four run videos, 1S stock, 1S, 2S stock, 1S upgraded, 2S upgraded. A lot of people are saying on the 2S, you end up breaking drive shafts. So we'll see. We haven't done, we haven't broken anything yet on 2S. Um, but we also, it's been completely stuck. So I don't know. Once we add weight, we're probably going to start to see some problems, but we will find out. I'm excited for this. What's the first thing you would upgrade on these guys? What is your first upgrade to the Enduro 24? Tell me in the comments below. Go ahead and zero out our scale. Here's our 10 gram. Make sure we're good, we're calibrated. All right, and our truck with no body. We're at 196. That's a uh, completely stock, no battery. We'll see how it, uh, how heavy we get when we add all the stuffs. Okay, so I think the first thing we're going to do on this little guy is put on the shocks. And because they're brass, 
I think we're going to flip them and we're going to put them on upside down so that the, the brass housing, because it's kind of significant, is on the bottom. Uh, that way it's technically unsprung, right? So we're going to flip the shocks and do those first. We also noticed that they are slightly different in their um, dampening. These feel a little less dampened and then these ones are more dampened. So we tried to pair them up. So I think we're going to put the more dampened shocks in the rear, uh, just because your front's going to see more of the bounce and uh, should keep the rears a little more stiff so that they don't, uh, it, it won't drop as much and cause us to uh, flip back. You know, it'll stay high. So we'll try that. Uh, if you have any ideas on whether you should put more dampened in the front or more dampened in the rear or stiffer in the front, stiffer in the rear, tell us in the comments below. Um, I know it's kind of subjective and based on the, the rig and your driving style, but that's kind of our thoughts. So being our first time installing anything on one of these, we just realized that the shock eyelets are different sizes. You can see the top here versus the bottom. The bottom is much larger, the top is small. So on the top, they just use a regular screw to hold it into the shock mounting on the shock tower. On the bottom, it uses this double ball joint and then it snaps in. So on the aftermarket one, you have this same situation. The hole's a little bigger, but not big enough to fit a ball joint through. And then you've got these little sleeves, the screw goes through, and then a double ball joint to go through both the shock and the link. So that's a thing. We can't flip them upside down, and that makes us sad. I'm sure we can fab something and make it work but we're just trying to get this stuff installed right now and, and I don't know if uh, I really want to do that yet. We'll see how it goes with them installed correctly. Man, I'll tell you what, getting these little guys out are a pain. Make sure you go out the threaded side, try to pull it out this way because otherwise you're going over both balls because they are the same size. So when you're pulling it out, come out like this. when you're putting these guys on make sure you put your o-rings on because once you put the ball joint onto the link you are not able to get your o-ring on so at least put the inside one on you can always put the outside one on after but that inside definitely needs to have the o-ring in there and put our outside one on as well. If you feel like it's binding too much, much like the SCX 24s, you can pull off the outside O-ring. Uh, I don't think that's going to matter much here. There's a lot of space in there, so it's already kind of loose. Um, you could always also add additional O-rings if you want to tighten it up a little, if you feel like it's a little too sloppy. It's also kind of strange to me that they use regular Phillips head versus the hex screws, but then their, where'd it go? their ball joint is a hex. It's a 1.5 millimeter. So it's, it's kind of strange that they don't use a 1.5 on the top as well. It'd be nice because it's annoying to have to switch between Phillips and hex, but it is what it is. So this is something that we do not like. You cannot tighten the screw down all the way on these. You have to leave a lot of thread showing. And that is because there's no spacer between the shock mounting point and your shock tower. Right? There's this little slip sleeve that goes inside just to take up space on the inside and so that you can rotate on that versus rotating directly on the screw. But there's no actual spacer between the shock and the shock tower so you basically just have to be kind of loose in there and you're rubbing on the shock tower just a little bit you can tighten it to adjust that but if you try to tighten it all the way down you're going to definitely get binding 
So just be aware, you cannot tighten the shock all the way down. And the stock ones aren't tightened all the way down either. It's just the design of this. So ideally you'd probably put some shim in there, and maybe even a little shim on the bottom, just to get yourself some spacing. Um, it really sucks the shocks are attached to the links on these and that it's a single piece that connects using you know the double double ball joint because you can't move your shocks outward at all without moving your links outward so that's kind of suck but we work with what we got right now and we can find something to shim in there i'm sure but we're just installing it as we got them so we decided we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of oil in these shocks just a little bit um just mainly on the shaft and kind of in the o-rings that are in this portion here uh, it should make them a little bit more consistent with each other as well as uh, just kind of smooth it up a little bit because they're completely dry. So this is some sewing machine oil. We're literally just going to put a little drip in there and a little drip in here. Just enough just to get a little, little oil on there. And they feel much more smooth. They're not as uh, dampened. So that's good. Yeah, much better compared to what they were. So we'll do the same thing on this guy. Oh yeah, that's all they needed. Just a little bit of oil. This is what we used. So we're gonna go ahead and install the brass belly plate now. Got the shocks all in. Seems good. Uh, brass belly plate. So getting the new uh, belly plate in there is pretty easy. It's just the four screws from the links to pop the links out and then four screws from the side rails. Um, the new belly plate comes with all hex screws for that. So that's nice. The only screws you have to use are the transmission screws. There's three transmission screws and you'll use your stock uh, Phillips heads for those. So it's, it's pretty easy and it looks cool. So remember there's three different length screws or sorry. So remember there's two different length screws. There's two longer ones and a shorter one. The shorter one goes in the center. If you put a long one in there, it'll actually go into the transmission and stop things from moving or the transfer case. This is a transfer case on this one. So you wanna make sure you don't put the uh, the long screw in the center. Uh, it'll go in there, but you'll bind up. You'll be hitting, like I said, something in the transfer case and that's not good. So remember as you're reinstalling your transfer case, this is the transmission, this is the transfer case. Don't forget your dog bone that goes here to connect your transmission and transfer case. Um, also, there are the three screws one of them is shorter and then the other two are longer. The shorter one goes in the center. If you put a longer one in the center, it will go, it'll go in, but then you will actually be hitting on some gears in there and uh, you're, you're not gonna spin, it's not good. So just make sure you uh, put the small one in the center. The two longer ones go on the outside. And you're good to go. Make sure you kind of check to make sure you're not binding. Turn it from the power point. If you try to turn the drive shafts, it's gonna be much harder to turn because of the way the gearing is set. So just turn it from the uh, actual transmission and you should be free. Just make sure your drive shafts aren't like hitting on anything or binding up. Should be good though, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our links. When you do this, you wanna make sure you're in phase, okay? Your drive shafts need to be, well, they don't need to be, but it's ideal to be in phase. I went ahead and removed the other link and shock so we can see this better. But essentially, the easiest way to get your drive shafts in phase is to make sure both sides, this side and this side, have the screw that you're screwing into to tighten it onto the, the, um, the diff and the transfer case are facing the same direction. And you can see it here, the long portion of this drive shaft should be the same as the long portion of this side of the drive shaft. And again, the easiest way to line it up is just get the screws facing the same direction. So we'll go ahead and spin our motor here so that we have the screws facing up. You can see both screws are facing up on our rig. And then make sure this screw is facing up. And then you insert your drive shaft. 
And then as I spin this around, you'll see both of the long portions of the drive shaft are on the same side. Both screw holes, it's hard to see in there, but the screw hole is facing up and the screw hole is facing up. So that's kind of the ideal, that's called in phase and that'll prevent it. That'll prevent things from shaking and bouncing and um, at high speeds, you'll get vibration. So I just want to point out one more thing while you're installing your belly plate here. Make sure you're not pinching these wires. These wires are, some of these are smaller and when you're putting it together, you can end up pinching the wires together. So just slide your zip ties a little further apart and pull your wires out and make sure that you're flush on your rails to your body plate or your uh, belly plate. So we got the belly plate in and our new shocks in. Things seem to be pretty smooth. Not bad. One thing we noticed, um, and I don't know, I'm pretty sure I was doing it before, but I never realized that the uh, axle, we have our shocks back one on the shock tower, but our axle actually hits the servo and the servo horn. How crazy is that? I think the stock one did that too, but maybe someday we'll figure out a way to, maybe we can lift the servo up a little bit, or I don't know. I don't know if we need it to go that much. Maybe, maybe we actually need uh, the shock towers to be a little lower, be able to mount it a little further back and a little lower probably more lower than further back. So the further back we go, the more articulation we'll get. We don't want to get too much articulation. That would be bad. So we're good. Um, I went ahead and added, we had extra O-rings. We have two left after this, but uh, O-rings came with the shocks. We added an O-ring between each shock tower and a little bushing. I don't think it really matters much, but it does help keep the bushing because the bushings just kind of slide back and forth inside the eyelet. So it helps keep the bushings at least closer to underneath the eyelet. Um, you want to make sure these are loose. Oh. You want to make sure that these are loose enough to where there's just a tiny bit of play. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's literally just the tiniest bit of play. And that helps prevent binding. This one you can do a little bit better. Um, if there's no play, then you're gonna your shocks will stick and they'll just bind and you'll be like that and it won't come down or it'll feel crunchy. If you're feeling crunchy, it's because your shock shaft is binding. Okay, so make sure you're not feeling crunchy. And that goes for double barrel shocks, it goes for these, SCX24s, any of them. If your shock feels kind of crunchy, a good chance that you're, you're basically, the shock shaft is trying to go into the shock housing at an angle, right? If this is my shock shaft, we're trying, instead of going straight in and out, it's trying to go in at an angle and that causes it to bind. So you need to have enough play in there and make sure your shocks are, you know, aligned enough. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of adjustment we can do here, but there's a lot of play on the bottoms. But uh, yeah, anyway, just make sure they're, they're going in and out straight. So I guess next we will do these steering knuckles. And they look like they're the same on both sides. They're symmetrical, so we can use them on either side. Would have been nice if they were actually offset just a little bit because then you could flip them and like so, right? Like for like this. If this part was offset up or down just a little bit, you wanted to lower this part of the steering linkage, you could just flip it to the other side. Well, you would use the other knuckle and you'd flip it essentially, and it would drop this bar down just a little bit. So you could have it lower or higher. In this case, I don't know if you'd want either right now, but you're almost hitting on here too, so maybe a little lower, but then you have to worry about clearance, right? Your approach angle gets worse if you lower this just a little bit, but would have been cool to have the option, even if it was just a little bit, although then you might have, well, as long as they're, you know, you're fine. I was going to say that if they were, if you weren't paying attention, you could end up having one high and one low, but you can't do that. There's only two. So <laughs> yeah, they could have at least, they could have given you that. And you still could do something where you just basically dremeled it down if you needed it to be a little lower, make sure you're equal on both sides. And then you could flip it from this normal size, normal side and height to the shaved side if you needed to adjust that. So you go ahead and just pop the two screws out and it comes right out. We have bushings in the front, not bearings. I did not know that. Makes sense though, for the price point, you're not gonna get bearings or getting bushings. Um, not a huge deal because we're not really super high speed or anything, but that would be a good upgrade is to put bearings in there versus the bushings. Interesting. So our um, hmm, our brass knuckles do not come with 
steering linkage screws. And I worry that they're threaded fine thread because these ones are for the top and bottoms, but for the steering linkage, this is coarse thread because it's going, it's plastic going into plastic. So they use coarse thread. So I worry that these are threaded for fine thread and it looks like they probably are because this does not want to go in straight. And they don't give you the screws for that. I guess they assume you're buying their aluminum steering linkage. That really sucks. And it's going to be, so we could use just another like an SEX 24 screw, but this side has this special piece. Let's get it off. We'll take a look. Okay. Well, that's good. This steering linkage, this part of the steering linkage is a, um, is a fine thread versus the coarse. So that's good because it'll go right into our new aluminum steering knuckles. And, uh, so the only issue we have is this screw. I'm surprised they don't just give you that screw. Like that really sucks that they don't give you that screw. So if you don't have extra parts, um, cause maybe this is your first truck or something and you buy the aluminum knuckles or brass knuckles, you, um, you're going to have to find a screw. The SEX 24 screws will work or should work. Actually, I don't know if they will. These are different thickness. So no, SEX 24 screws will not work. So yeah, that sucks. You're going to have to find or just not care and cross thread the original screw into the uh, steering knuckle. So the SEX 24 screws are M 1.4s. I believe these are M 2s. So they have a larger diameter. So you cannot use the SEX 24s. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Uh, we'll see if we can find an M 2 fine thread that'll fit. If not, maybe we'll just cross thread it because that's what you would have to do if you didn't have an extra screw uh, and you only had the truck and you only had the steering knuckles. All right, so we got our knuckles reinstalled. Um, one thing, make sure you don't over tighten these, obviously. You'd want to tighten them down uh, until they're nice and snug and then kind of back them off just a little bit until they basically are floppy. There shouldn't be any play, but they should be floppy, right? They should just naturally try to drop down. Okay, like so. No, it's good enough, I guess. We could loosen it just a little bit. Like literally a tenth of a turn. Okay. Yeah, there just there shouldn't be any play on the actual uh, axle. And there's not. So we're good. So we actually have these fine thread M2s that came out of, I believe, the belly plate when we took the belly plate out. And these are long enough and we will use them for our steering linkage um, into our steering knuckle. Uh, they're going to be a little loose in there, just a little bit, but that's fine. They're going to be tight into here, so we're good to go. That'll work. Again, worst case, if you have nothing and you only got these knuckles, you could just cross-thread it in there, I guess, or re-thread it. If you've got the drill bit for that, you could redo the threading to a coarse thread. But we're just going to use this guy. And worst case, we can snip this off, which do we want to do that? I don't know. We might end up going back to stock, so we'll leave it for now. So I guess next we're going to try to do this transmission. We'll go ahead and uh, pop this out of here and get this guy in. So to get this guy out, it's just one screw here on the side, and then there are two here, one through your shock tower and one in the same spot as the other side. You just pull those three screws out and you can wiggle her loose. She will pop right out. I lied. There's four screws. There's another one on the shock tower. And now she'll pop right out. Ta-da. Next, we'll have to take off the cover here. And then the back portion here.
kicks off the motor mount, the center of the transmission, and the front drive, drive side. Now we can go ahead and pull the motor out of the motor mount. I would set these screws aside because I will assume that they uh, do not give you these screws. So let's keep those separate. Now we'll go ahead and reinstall the motor on the motor mount. So you're going to want to make sure you mount it the same way you took it out. Um, that's going to have the flat side to the mounting side here. These are your two mounting points and you're flat on this side which means that you had the screw here and the screw here. Interesting. So that's annoying. There's a little groove here and you need to make sure your screw will fit down into that little groove. Both the screws are the same size, so let's go ahead and loosen this one up. That way the motor can move a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and go down on this one. Just a little tight. Oh, man. I mean, it's hitting on there. We're going to have to uh, we'll probably just use an exacto or something and try to uh, clear that out, make a little more space. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to clear out this groove this little notch that's here okay you can see we just kind of took an exacto and, and kind of scraped it out i think it was just the coating was a little thick there and uh, causing the screw to not be able to fit down in so we're good now pretty easy little fix let's go ahead and transfer the main transmission parts So this uh, spur gear nut is a four millimeter. The spur gear is uh, different on each side, so make sure you keep it the way it came out, which is this uh, nipple side, the side of protruding goes in. We'll just keep that in mind. And then we also have our bushings to get out Again, interesting they're not bearings. When getting your bushings out, just make sure you work them slowly to get them taken out. You don't want to damage them. They're brass, so they are a soft metal. And you just you don't want to mar them up. I'm using the uh, screwdriver just to hold the spur gear so it doesn't spin while I tighten it down. It's kind of hard to get on and off. Um, so by doing that, it just helps prevent my fingers from getting torn up trying to hold the, the pinion back here. All right, so that's good. And now we'll do this last one. So this has a little grub screw. It's a 1.5.
was like, am I blind? Make sure you don't strip your grub screw while you're going in. It's, uh, it's easy to get it kind of off thread there. You also don't want to over tighten it. There's going to be a little bit of play in there. Um, that's just the way this, this is. I can go ahead and throw this on here now. Always make sure you test things as you fit them together. So these screws are a 0.5. So interesting, we tighten these down, not overly tight, but tight enough, and it caused binding. So that's why you always kind of want to check as you go. Yeah, we barely even tightened it, and now we're binding. I wonder if our bushings are slightly off. We're going to have to give it a look. So we went ahead and made sure all of our bushings were pushed all the way in, uh, tightened it down. It was still a little tight in there, so we went ahead and took off our C-cup and hooked a Dremel with a bit on it, or not a bit, but a chuck on it, and hooked it straight into there. And we just ran it for a while, just a little bit, and it got smoother, a lot more smooth than it is or was before. So um, it's it's nice and nice and buttery now, so that's good. And now we just gotta put it back onto the motor mount, I'll put the motor mount onto it, and we'll be good to go. So it feels nice and free in there. All right, like I always say, let's go ahead and test it before we get it all installed. Seems good. Like I said, it doesn't feel like there's any kind of binding. So I think we're good. Now we'll go ahead and install it back in the rig. So because of how tight the transmission and motor and whatnot are and all the wires, um, I would just put in your, get your two screws in, one here and one here. That way the motor can kind of still move a little bit. And then you're gonna take off your uh, transfer case because it's easier to pop off than the motor uh, and, or the transmission and motor. So we'll just kind of pop this off real quick and that'll get you your dog bone back in. Just make sure you don't mess up your Drive shafts. And like so. I'm going to put our screws back in. All right, let's test it. Something is not happy. All right, so we just found it. You can see here, look, our dog bone in, in there is hitting. I don't know if you can see it, right here. It's hitting on the axle. So we have to remedy that. So somehow, at some point, don't know how, don't know when, it clearly wasn't on our last, or you know, during our last run because we were fine, but this dog bone pin popped out. All right, all better. That was very strange. I don't know what what caused that. Um, it's a little off, but. It's much more straight. Um, so something you can do is you can put a little tiny bit of Loctite in there or some super glue and uh, 
I can help hold it if it keeps doing that. So I'm not worried about it. I think we're good. But if it keeps doing it, we will super glue it. Okay, we got that all fixed. Knuckles back on. Now we're smooth like a butter. Smooth like a butter. Man, it's like not even vibrating at all. Actually, I mean, it's hard. You can't see it from the camera, but it feels nice and smooth. There's no vibration or anything. I mean, there's a little, but like, there's like none. Fantastic. Okay, let's put these on now. This is our last dealy. Oh, we need to put... Wait a second. There it is. Pushing fell out, and then we've got... Uh, Still got to mount this thing. We weren't even mounted. Oh no. All right, let's mount it. We got two screws missing on our transmission. Man, I didn't think it could get smoother, but it's even more smooth now. Beautiful. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we're gonna put we're gonna put these guys in there. We're gonna do the brass hexes now. Bam. All right. You know, I'm gonna be honest. I see these little washer shims that have they have like grooves on them right but I don't know what they're really for why would you want anything with any sort of friction or grooves on your axle when you're tightening down I do not understand that maybe I'm missing something so these are actually slightly extended so we are gonna have a little bit wider wheelbase so that's pretty awesome Oh no, trusty magnets, let's find that pin. Ta-da, found it. Just rub it over the carpet and pick up anything metal that fail. Perfect. trick to putting these little things in is you kind of tuck them underneath your nail and then you can slide them in. Ta-da! All right, bam. This is our barrel nut. Brass barrel nut is what they're called. Mm -hmm. Remember when you're putting on your wheels and your, your lugs, do not over tighten. You can get them down snug and then you kind of want to just back it off a little bit they should be super loose okay same with the rear the uh, fronts usually over tighten easier than the rears the rears you can get pretty tight without them being uh, over tightened you still don't want to over tighten them you don't want to strip anything but yeah and we got a little bit wider stance hold on let's put this on here real quick yeah just a little a little bit just a tiny tiny amount I like it. Let's weigh it. Let's see what the difference in weight is. All right. So we're all set here. We've got a good zero. We did it without the battery last time. We will do it without the battery again. It was 196 last time. 274. So that's an extra 78 ounces of weight. Now, remember, it's not just about weight. And this is a bad example. So I'm actually setting a bad example here. It's about good weight, and it's about trying to make sure your weight is distributed in the best way possible. In the most ideal situation, all your weight would be as low as possible and not rotating. Okay, you want all your weight as low as possible, which is unsprung, non-rotating mass. So putting heavy weight in your wheels, getting brass wheels, and putting brass on the inside of the wheels, and putting a, you know lead around the wheel, you can do all those things. It's just going to make it really heavy on your rotating mass, which is not good for your transmission your bearings, or in this case, bushings, your transmission, your motor, your ESC even, it'll all get hotter, more hot, burn out easier. It's also just not the best in a, from a performance standpoint. And then you want uh, it all unsprung, right? So all the weight should be unsprung, which means not above where the springs sit. Some argue that links are unsprung, but you know they're attached to the chassis, so I kind of feel like they're sprung weight, which so having heavy links is probably not ideal. Again, the most ideal components to have heavy realistically, is going to be your axles, um, maybe your steering knuckles, even though that puts uh, stress on your servo, but really it's just your axles, your diff covers, if, you have, if you're able to do diff covers. Axles and diff covers, you know, and for the SCX24s, they have uh, axle-mounted servos, right? 
And so if you have like a heavy servo and heavy, ser uh, like a brass uh, servo mount, you know, that's kind of ideal as well. Uh, you can put brass here, but again, any any weight on these moving parts is gonna stress them a little. If you've got a good servo, you can put brass in there. It's not a big deal. You can put brass steering knuckles, not a big deal. It's the rotating mass, even though I've got it here, you gotta be careful. The more rotating mass, the more stress, heat, whatever. Um, so if you could magically just take all the weight of the whole rig, say this was, this was 100, what did I say, 198 before, 196 grams. If you could take 100 grams off this whole rig and put it all right here in the bottom of this and in the bottom of this with a 60-40, 60 in the front, 60% of the weight in the front, 40 in the back. You could put all that weight, 60-40, on the lowest point right here. That would be the most ideal, not even adding a single gram. And heck, ideally, you could put that 100 grams right here and magically remove all the rest of the weight. You would rather have the 100 gram rig, so long as your tires can can get grip, which they should because your rig's much lighter and it makes it hard, it makes it less difficult to go up the hill because it's less heavy so you don't need as much traction but as long as you're getting grip then you don't need weight people think they need 600 700 gram rigs and you just don't it just puts wear and tear on all your components lighter rig with proper weight distribution is really what you're going for anyway i'm done ranting um yeah we're gonna go ahead and throw this on the test and compare to uh our stock we're probably gonna do 2s and 1s and uh we'll see how that does on the rocks now with a little bit of weight um Adding weight can be good. You just want to do it right. And this rig doesn't do it right at all. So we'll see how it does. Um, again, it's probably going to come down to just being able to get good traction and the weight will help with the traction. So we'll see. Stock on 1S. Stock with 2S.
brass upgrades on 1S. Servo might be going crazy that easy, huh? Oh. Let's turn down our door rate just a little bit. Just to be safe. We put it down. We can do it with this servo. Alright, we gotta swap servos. We got a cheapie we can put in there that's probably way better than the stock anyway. Alright, we got the new servo put in. It's just one of these little cheapies. Uh, you can get them on Amazon for like three or four bucks. You get four of them for like twelve dollars, so. Um, they're not the strong, they're not the most powerful, um, but they definitely, but they definitely work. Um, it's probably better than the stock replacement for sure. So we'll see. All right, let's run it. to us.
so we've decided to try something here. We're going to take the stock tires and wheels off and throw these treels with Patagonias on. They're slightly larger. Not much, but just a little bit. And these are pretty small, so. And uh, we'll see if that, that helps. Because uh, it's seeming like it's a little rough. Also, something we just realized that we did not know before. I don't know if you can tell the difference there, but this is the uh, Enduro 24. This is the SCX 24 axle size. So the Enduro 24 actually has a larger diameter axle shaft. Interesting. Enduro 24, SCX 24. Enduro has a larger axle shaft. All right, guys, so thanks for sticking around in this one. And uh, I know it was a long one, but hopefully you learned something and we saved you some time while you're working on your own truck. Um, we want to thank Hobby Details for getting some of this stuff out to us as quickly as they could so that we can show you. And um, yeah, we think that these little trucks are awesome and there's a lot you can do to add to them, make them better than they already are. I wouldn't say that the combination of parts we put on this guy are the best combination. Like I said before, we kind of want to have lower center of gravity. Having the extra brass on the transmission is awesome uh, if we had some more brass on the, the axles and much lower. You saw a huge difference when we added on the trio wheels just to get a little bit bigger tire diameter really makes the truck a lot more capable. But the brass does help. It definitely felt like it was sticking to the rocks better. And um, I mean, I would definitely recommend getting some brass onto your uh, Enduro 24. It's just uh, making sure you put it in the right spots. And like I said before, there's not a lot of people out there making upgrades for the Enduro. So the hobby detail stuff is definitely awesome if you can get your hands on it. If you're a retailer and would like to sell, definitely reach out to Hobby Details. They typically deal direct with retailers, uh, not so much with the consumer. So uh, definitely, if you're a retailer, reach out to them. Anybody with an Enduro 24 would benefit from some of their different parts. Like I said, the, uh, the brass knuckles, stuff that's lower, the belly plate, maybe the shocks. Um, again, you just want to... If you go all brass, then the stuff like the transmission is, is great, but you need to make sure that you're focusing your weight lower. And uh, this truck just didn't completely do that. There are a bunch of other parts out there that we probably need to get to really make this thing perform a little bit better. Um, because in stock form, they, they're pretty good, but having that extra front biased weight will definitely help you. Anyway, guys, be sure to like, subscribe, do all those good things. Share in your Enduro 24 groups. Uh, if you have anybody looking to do upgrades or wondering about what upgrades are out there, you can show them this video. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Get out there and run your trucks. Mm -hmm.